Hi there! Did you know that the world's first website was built using only HTML? Here's what it looked like. It had no styling with CSS, no images or videos, and no dynamic content through JavaScript. Websites have come a long way in the past decades and are now packed with more features than ever before. JavaScript has played an essential role in shaping modern websites, as it's excellent for client-side and server-side scripting. With the help of XML HTTP request object, JavaScript enabled client-server communication without the need to reload pages. Now, Fetch API, a part of JavaScript, introduced a more powerful, cleaner, and more lightweight approach to making HTTP requests. It has been added to Node.js, in turn simplifying requests, response handling, and asynchronous operations in web development or even web scraping. In this video, I'll introduce the Fetch API, and I'll show you how to make requests with it in Node.js, while also comparing it to its counterpart library Axios. If you prefer written resources, remember that this tutorial is also available on our blog. So what is Fetch API? It's a JavaScript application programming interface for accessing and uh, fetching network resources. Fetch API uses promises, which are in simpler terms an upgrade to callbacks. With promises, asynchronous operations can continue without the need to wait for a callback response, which would block further execution of code. If you've used the XML HTTP request object before, you'll find Fetch API able to perform the same task, but better. Additionally, Fetch API can use all the HTTP request methods, such as get, post, put, delete, and others. While it's still an experimental feature in Node.js, Fetch API is supported by all the major web browsers. Fetch API is included with Node.js version 17.5, but you can also access it by installing the Node Fetch package with NPM. Let's start with a very basic code sample that sends a GET request to a target website and prints its HTML document. For demonstration purposes, we'll use a dummy website, quostoscrape.com, as a target. Since Fetch API returns a promise object, you can use the Fetch then syntax. Open your preferred code editor and enter these lines. The fetch method returns a promise object, which is then passed to the first then method to extract the text, and later the second then method prints the fetched HTML. You can save this code file as quotes.js then open your terminal and run it. You should see a warning that Fetch API is an experimental feature, followed by the HTML of your target website. Furthermore, you can write the same code snippet using the async await syntax. If your goal is to create a web scraper, then you should install a parser of your choice. So let's use the Cheerio library to parse the HTML and extract specific elements, for example, a quote. Now, let's talk about HTTP headers, as they are essential in any web-related operation. In simple terms, they pass on valuable information about the request, the requester, and the response. The response object holds all of the response HTTP headers in the response headers collection, 
which you can access and display by running the following code. What you'll see printed here might be different from what you would see when using a browser. If your target website has course headers enabled, your browser will limit the headers you can access for security reasons. With course-enabled websites, you'll only retrieve headers like cache control, content language, content type, expires, last modified, and pragma. You can also send custom request headers by including them as a parameter within the fetch method. For instance, here you can also include more parameters to extend the functionality. When sending requests, Fetch API uses GET as the default request method, which can be changed to POST or any other request method. You only need to specify it within the Fetch method. With this in mind, why not practice sending data to a test website? Note that you'll need to convert the data you want to send into a string. So let's review how the code may look like in the editor. As you can see here, the fetch method includes the post parameter together with JSON stringify data, which converts the data into a string. When it comes to handling exceptions with fetch API, you can use the fetch then catch syntax to handle errors. If you are using the async await syntax, 
Then the errors can be handled with the try-catch block. Now, Axios is another popular promise-based and straightforward Node.js package that you can use for HTTP GET, POST, and other request methods. Consider this GET request with Axios that calls the GET method. Similarly, a POST request can be formed by calling the POST method. As you'll see in a few moments, Axios and Fetch API are relatively similar in code yet they do have their differences. Let's compare them by making a POST request to HTTP bin.org POST. Here's what the code looks like for Axios. The same can be achieved with this Fetch API code. As you can see, the output is almost identical, with the difference being in some HTTP header values. Further differences between Axios and Fetch API can be summarized in seven points. Firstly, Axios uses the data property of the request, while Fetch API uses the body property. Secondly, Axios requires you to use a specific name for your response variables if the target website specifies the name and this requirement. In the case of Fetch API, they can be named any way you want. Axios allows JSON data to be sent directly, while Fetch API requires conversion to a string. Axios can handle JSON responses directly. On the other hand, Fetch API must first call the response JSON method to get the response in JSON format. With Axios, you can easily monitor the progress using the progress event. 
Phage API doesn't offer a direct method. Axios supports interceptors, while Phage API doesn't. And lastly, Phage API supports response streaming, while Axios doesn't. Phage API brings simplicity to the Node.js environment. So go with it if you are seeking a lightweight approach to making network requests in modern browsers and environments with support for promises. But if your operations are more complex, you may find Axios more feature-rich and convenient with advanced error handling. If you've enjoyed this tutorial, don't forget to give it a thumbs up and subscribe for more web scraping related content. Thanks for watching and see you next time.